Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead and another episode of Garden Ramblings. I'm going to tour the garden, talk about what's going on, and hopefully kind of ramble my way through some tips that will help you out. Tomorrow is Earth Day, so happy Earth Day. We are having a sale starting tonight at our seed shop through Sunday, 22% off the entire store, whatever you want to buy. Use the code EARTH22. You can find more information out in the video description. And if you make a purchase, you'll get some seeds from our friends at Bentley Seeds. They have a wonderful collection of special occasion seeds pre-made if you want to order them for baby shower, Mother's Day, etc. Or you can kind of create your own event packages for work-related um, events or specialized uh, birthday parties etc here's a little bit of what their seeds look like this is a very small sample of their pre-made packets they're absolutely beautiful and you can find information on them in the video description today i want to show you a lot about what's been growing over here the potatoes are up they look pretty healthy just keep in mind remember that potato greens the leaves that are growing above the ground can't take a frost so when you're planting potatoes you're really trying to plant them four to six weeks before the first frost so that the potato establishes the roots set up strong roots lead to great greenery growth and then you're going to break the surface when the frost is sort of you know less chance of frost i laugh when i say that because i'm going to be putting out my tomato and pepper plants now i always get burned by mother nature but it's just been so nice that i want to get them out into the garden and i plan to protect them and i also think we're not going to get a frost here in maryland zone seven potatoes look great onions are coming up those are globe artichokes i do have to get in here obviously and weed you know overall i'm happy with where my garden is at as we walk through but i made a mistake you can see that the wild garlic is kind of producing seed heads so are the other weeds you really want to get the weeds out it's fine to put stuff off slow and steady you know get the chores done in your garden but don't let them get to the point where they seed or they flower and they seed or they're going to just come back you know next year etc let me spin around this way I just did a video on onions and i want to stress I think one of the mistakes most gardeners make, new and old, is we don't water enough, especially when we're watering transplants. So these onions just went in and they have just tiny little root systems this big. But any transplant or even seed when you're putting a seed in and you're direct sowing, we have to water not every day. I mean, if the temperature's in the 70s and 80s and it's sunny, probably every day. But when it's cooler, every other day, etc., no rain more often, um, lots of rain less often, etc. My point being is that the root systems to support all this green growth are only an inch long, really, if that. They aren't going to send out deeper roots for a good, if you're lucky, seven days, but 14 days. So you have to keep up watering your seeds, your transplants regularly because today it's not even 10.30 a.m. and I'm already sweating. It's going to get up to 85 again and when I show you the shade cloth inside we'll be talking about soil temperature. But in upper 70s, 80s definitely, sun pounding down, that top inch or two of the soil is going to dry out. All this greenery is letting water out. You know, as it's pulling water into the systems, the water escapes through the leaves of the plant. These plants will get beat up and hindered in growth if you don't keep that top two inches watered. It doesn't matter how great the moisture level is four inches deeper, how great the fertilizer is and nutrients are deeper. Until those roots get down there, you really have to stay up on the watering. And I want to stress that because the questions I get so many times are, how often do I water? When do I water? And I can't really answer that. Watering the top, you know, six inches is a shallow watering. You need to do that more regularly. Watering down past, you know, eight inches, 10 inches, 12 inches deeper, really have to do that once, I think, a week when your plants are bigger, if not twice a week. Watering will change the way your plants grow really and you're going to get a lot more harvest out of the plants they're going to thrive more by just increasing your watering it's really difficult to overwater anything that's in the ground because the water will just escape into the ground so these are garlic plants that have been growing since last year deep roots not watering as often transplants that i just put in these are onions that i grew in other videos um in, uh, I think in January maybe, of just how I overseed a foil baking tray or a plastic shoe box. And these all grew 
inside and then in my greenhouse and now they're in there. It's just That's a whole seed packet thrown into a foil tray. They get to about that size, put them in the ground. Potatoes look good. Garlic that went in sometime in March. This is six weeks old, maybe seven weeks old. Soft neck, just pressed in. This is what, how much it has grown since I put it in in the beginning of March. You know, you still have time to put in garlic. It may not form beautiful cloves and all that, but you can use all that. You can use the greenery. You can use whatever forms beneath the earth. Um, you can plant it now. You can plant it at different times. And that's one of the things that I want to stress is you don't need to have perfect plants or follow the exact routine for when they need to go into the ground because you can harvest different parts of the plant. This year, oh, one more thing I want to show you. So this used to be my sweet potatoes, and I, I just don't like them. <laughs> my wife does. So I'm going to fill this up because of the level drops. So when you're building raised beds and you're putting in different materials at different levels, by the time the next year comes, the level usually drops. So I'm going to build this back up with organic matter. Um, I'm going to plant maybe a third of that sweet potatoes. The rest of this is going to be leeks. Um, my wife does enjoy them. So this year... I'm trying to plant more of what I'm going to enjoy and eat, what my wife's going to eat. And we're trying to really make meals for breakfast and lunch out of the garden. But I'm trying to use every part of the plant. Gate is stuck. Um, like the leaves, the roots if possible. Not just, you know, the part of the plant that I've been kind of programmed to enjoy. Like a radish. The radish stem right above the radish is delicious. The rest of the leaves really full of nutrition. You can cook them in so many ways. Rather than throw them out or compost them and just eat the radish, eat the whole plant. This is my container section. This is going to be a series I just started and also growing into vertical towers. I had to get all this planted up so that you weren't just looking at blank containers. So I think they look pretty good. Notice the shade cloth in different areas. I want to show you, some people don't know what bolting is. This is a good example. This is spinach. It's a biennial. So this was planted in the fall. The cool weather came, it didn't bolt or flower because spinach and your leafy greens are going to bolt when the soil temperature warms, survived from the fall through the winter, and now because it's on its second year of growth, it's bolting a lot more quickly, it's getting warm, it's not protected. And bolting is basically going from nice leaf production like maybe that, to it starts sending up stalks like that, and then eventually you see the flower heads come out and the whole flavor and structure of the plant changes. So by trying to keep this soil cooler using the shade cloth, it will slow bolting down. And I've spent a lot of time, you know, taking care of these plants. I'm going to show this space off again. This was all grown indoors. I don't know. I can do 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36 heads of lettuce right there. All grown from seed. I'm using the shade cloth because last week we had four days of 70, 80 degree temperature. Today we're going to have three days of 80 de degree temperature. Just look how beautiful it is. All because it's protected. If I wasn't protecting it, this is just going to bolt and I'm not going to be able to enjoy it. Right now it's at the size that I can start harvesting it. I want to try and get another four or five days worth of growth, but it's absolutely beautiful. One of the things you have to learn as a gardener is kind of keep learning. So I was slow to the game using shade cloth and I would just battle and do the same thing over and over again every year and nothing really changed. Now that I've been using shade cloth for a couple of years, it really changes the way that I can grow cool weather crops and you can use it again in the summer to cool down your soil around your tomatoes, your peppers, your eggplant so that they keep producing. What happens is same thing with how the soil dries in that top two inches. When it gets hot, there's lots of surface roots. The heat bakes the top two, three inches of the soil, warms them up. Your plants get a message to bolt and your core of the crops try and make seed. In here, this is absolutely beautiful. This is a horseradish plant. It is starting... I don't know what this is. Is this the horseradish? I've, this is my second year with it. So it is starting to flower. Don't know if that's good or bad, but the root is just unstoppable. So I'm going to look up if you can eat horseradish leaves. I don't know, but I'm going to see what I can do with those. This is, I don't know, round three of radishes. I mean, they're looking really good. Three 
radishes in there. And when you plant three, one of them usually doesn't do much. But if you plant two, just take the bigger one and leave the smaller one in there. And what I was talking about was, of course, we just eat the radish. The stem right here between my fingers, delicious. And then you can eat the leaves. So I've been just eating this entire radish minus the root. I could probably eat that if I wanted to. And I really enjoy it. So that's one of my goals is to maximize the food that comes out of my garden. All right, let's just spin around this way slowly. Carrots look good. You can see a sunflower plant right there. Another sunflower right there. I have beans coming up already, all from seeds that fell last year. What's interesting about the sunflowers and beans is they'll germinate when those temperatures spike. And then frosts are coming at night occasionally, and the beans and the sunflowers aren't dying off. If I started them indoors or in my greenhouse, brought them out here, frost comes, they die off. When seeds germinate in nature, regular conditions, and grow how nature intended them, they're a lot, not I was going to say a little more tough, they are a lot tougher and they can handle the elements better. Lots of cilantro in there. Cilantro, if you don't know, flowers attracts pollinators, seeds very quickly. We call that coriander. You can harvest the dry seeds, use it in your kitchen, or do what I do. As I just scatter it around, let the cilantro pop up as you know it wishes. And you can see, I, I mean, I have the video, so I won't talk too much about it, but I'm using different things to create shade. The radishes back there in the back part of the garden haven't formed yet. I'm going to keep the soil cool. I'm going to keep them cool because, you know, I don't want to work for something for four weeks, six weeks. The heat comes, love the heat, but then it wrecks my cool weather crops. Broccoli in there, you can see some white sort of papery looking stuff, that's garlic. So what I did was, went to Costco, I don't remember how much this was, um, $4 maybe, I don't know, I think four bucks, maybe five bucks, two pounds of garlic, and I'm just breaking it open, and I've tucked it in all different places through here. I mean, there's probably, I don't know, like 20 cloves. I'm trying to use garlic and onions to see what they actually repel or if, and I'm not thinking, you know, garlic and onions are going to stop problematic insects from coming in. But when you're managing pests and disease, the whole key is to manage down the damage. So my expectation is garlic and onions don't fix the problem, they reduce the problem. And that's the whole goal is reduce disease issues, reduce insect issues. And if you're not journaling or you're not taking notes somewhere, I really recommend that because if you're new or old, you're not going to be able to remember um, vine borer showed up July 3rd or that white moth that lays eggs that create the green cabbage worms shows up. And I know it showed up seven days ago here, shows up March, let's say, I'm sorry, let's say April 14th. By knowing when the insects show up and the diseases show up, you can start treating plants earlier. The moth, or the butterfly actually, it's a white butterfly, is loving brassicas. I've already put down my Captain Jack's dust on there to really prevent the worms from taking hold. So start early rather than when the disease actually shows up on your plant or when you find lots of holes in your plant and you'll be a lot happier. Uh, slowly spin this way, waves of radishes, parsnips, beets, everything is doing what I want it to do. I'm just hoping for the weather to kind of break. As of, uh, let's take a look at this. So I forgot, well, as of Sunday for the next week after that, 60 degree days, 50 degree nights, perfect. Look at my asparagus. I forgot about it, didn't really check it for five days and it's already starting to get too tall. This is what asparagus does. It leaps out, it'll get four feet tall, brings in energy, re-establishes the roots. So I need to harvest all of that now because I want more spears to be coming up. I don't want it to be flowering now. It's only the middle of April. I can harvest really until, I don't know, middle of May. I mean, this is purple passion. It's just crazy strong asparagus stalks. My clematis is starting to flower. It's taken over this whole space. Absolutely love that. This is a way you could use shade too. Like maybe you set up trellises, 
that um, go perpendicular. Let me see. Let me see if I get it right. No, go parallel to the southern sun. You grow it just like this. Creates some shade so that it cools off some of your crops. You can use flowers, vining crops, different ways to create shade pockets in your garden if you want to extend the season for cool weather crops or grow plants that just don't like to be baked in the sun. This is where I was talking last week with interplanting more so than a maximizing space. Look how much it's grown since the last garden rambling. Spinach looks good. That broke, so I'll eat that. So there's holes in there. If I turn this over, there's an insect. So when you start seeing some holes in it, could be beat up, could be insects. You want to go and check everything. Catch the problems early, treat them early, you have a lot less damage. Anyway, in between there, rather than just leaving that open space, final wave of radishes, they look good. Even if maybe they don't form, Harvest the greens and eat them. They're delicious. Peas back there look pretty good. Sadly, <laughs> that poor old black mission fig just isn't doing anything. And we'll see if he gets one more chance. Muscadines hacked back in my own style, which is fine. Things don't have to be perfect, but they're growing nicely. It's two different varieties there. Spinning through the bramble of blackberries. Everything looks... I think pretty good. This is where I want it to be. And if we spin around, what you notice is I have my bed set up. I had a plan. Slow and steady. We'll build your garden. We'll build garden soil. And I just wanted to get the beds ready. The summer beds are down where I'm standing now. So, well, the warm weather crops. Got to take care of the pepper plants there. But now that the beds are set up, the paths will get a weed eater one more time. And then after I set up the containers over there, clean up the asparagus area, I'll be putting down mulch. Let's go around this way so I keep my shadow out of the video. First container that went up when frost was around. Cool weather crops can take that frost and freeze. Looks wonderful. That's a green stalk vertical tower. I'm affiliated with them. If you're interested in that, check out the video description. Some of, I mean, you're going to see this in the video that's coming up. This is, oh, this is the cilantro. So I put cilantro in quite early. This is what cilantro looks like when it bolts. It sends up this big flower stalk and I don't know if we can see that in camera, but the flower heads are starting right there. This is what cilantro looks like before it bolts. Well, wait, that could be parsley. Hold on. Yeah, that's parsley. That is uh, curled parsley. Here's the cilantro. Looks very similar. It's starting to bolt too. So that makes sense. These are all put in at the same time. But you can still use the leaves, save the seeds. Strawberries got beat up. I don't know why, but we'll go back and visit a space um, on the outside of the garden. I'll show you what I'm doing there. Let's see. Uh, Tiny Tim tomatoes. These are the tomatoes that I were, was growing indoors. And a lot of people don't know that determinate tomatoes will actually regrow. However, it's very slow. They're beat up. And it's sometimes easier just to put in new determinate varieties. Determinate tomatoes get to a set height, flower, and produce over a couple week period, maybe three week period. So this has produced really well indoors, brought it outside, cut it back, been getting it acclimated to the sun, using my ag fabric to just cover it when the afternoon sun comes. If not, the UV rays are going to damage the plant. But it's starting to send up new leaves, new flowers. This will reestablish and I will have Tiny Tim tomatoes growing here by the middle of May. And again, remember, I'm rolling the dice with getting my plants out. Blueberries looking good. Here's another area where I'm using my ag fabric to just cool down the lettuce on this side. Interplanting a lot in there, put in some shishito peppers, just added them. So I have lettuce, peas, peppers, onions back there. And I will, you know, after the peas are harvest, I will be putting in more peppers into that space. Use, maximize the space of your garden. Oh, gotta put my face in there. 
Maximize this or the shadow maximize the space of your garden and plan that you know as the cool weather crops are finishing up You've already planted in your warm weather crops You can cut the plants off so you're not yanking up roots and disturbing the roots of the warm weather crops Just leave those cool weather crop roots in the soil. They'll break down. They'll give back Wanted to show you the peppers in here. These are all peppers that as I was saying I started I guess Late October probably late November. I don't know but it's and they were for demonstration rather than killing them I've put them in here. They are starting to come back strongly They're gonna be huge in about two weeks three weeks and they're gonna go into my garden and I will be getting sweet banana peppers really really early Because I've been growing beautiful root systems in here. It's really about well-established root systems for your transplants rather than larger upper growth if you put in a small root system that has to maintain large upper growth your plants are going to struggle a bit because once they're outside that sun really sucks the water out of the soil the plants lose water through their leaves and the root systems just can't keep up with the size of the plant peppers are in this is above the ground so when frost comes the cold air usually settles down so this guy should be okay because even if a frost comes I'll protect them but the air should be just warm enough up here that the peppers are left alone. And I'm planting these a little bit differently than the last year. A lot closer to the side, more air flow down the middle, and a couple less plants. But all green bell peppers, and that's a red cayenne for some color. More muscadines. We come around this way. You can see how much the fruit garden is filled in. Just sticking with my plan. Going at my own pace, everybody's schedules are different. We can only do so much. But if you're always going forward, you're going to get through the chores that you have to take care of in your garden. I want to show you this space. I don't remember if I showed this in the last one or not. Lettuce in here, radishes in here, weeds. I thought they were something special, but they're not. They're weeds. I've been taking strawberries from all over my property, potting them up taking care of them and these are all going to refill my strawberry towers over there different varieties ever bearing June bearing will repopulate the containers and I don't have to spend any money and what I like to do is when I get runners coming out of here I plant them throughout my property places that they can just be left alone and they will reproduce and they will send out runners and then you're going to end up with plenty of plants that you can repopulate your gardens with and if you were to to do a plant yard sale you know you got beautiful plants to sell who doesn't love strawberries trees different things that I've potted up over the years let's finish up by going over to the greenhouse and remember we have that sale this weekend through I think Sunday at midnight and you can save 22% off our seed shop and please check out um, Bentley seeds because their special occasion packets are beautiful you can really work with them and create whatever you want for your needs here is a tomato that grew with my tiny Tim's inside and I didn't want to get rid of it I think that it's a black cherry I've been getting it acclimated to the outdoors and I'm gonna plant that up this weekend it's actually growing in a quart root pouch that we sell but it's been doing pretty well I'm gonna plant it so that I take maybe a foot of the stem goes into the ground this is how tomatoes are meant to to kind of grow they kind of sprawl across the ground but I will train it up the cattle panel and I hope to get cherry tomatoes sooner than later we're not going to go inside today pretty much the same stuff here's the tomatoes that I've took outside they've been acclimating in the shadier area they're looking good I hit them with a chemical low dose fertilizer because it has everything in it just to green them up get them in shape and now I will go back to my organic ways once they're in the garden it really makes a difference with transplants to give them everything that they need stuff I've potted up and we'll just finish up here so this is my station for potting up it gets morning Sun it's nice and cool nice place to work get to look inside the greenhouse really like the addition of the greenhouse and maybe we'll finish up with just saying as you build your garden it's not solely for growing food it's also a place I think to relax enjoy share and think about creating structures and sitting areas and just different designs where you can come out with a cup of coffee 
eat your breakfast, walk around in the evening, walk around with uh, family, with friends, and just enjoy the space. I really like, let's just kind of look across what I was able to create over the last four years. It took me 25 years to find a property and all that, but I'm just happy with where things are. So slow and steady will build your garden. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. Enjoy your garden this weekend, and I will hopefully again see you very soon for another Garden Ramblings. Thanks for watching.